In this video I'm going to compare 7 big band tutti chords by some of the great arrangers and composers. For this exercise I'll choose chords that are at a loud dynamic, but if you like this video I might make another one where I look at more big band chords at softer dynamics. Quite a bit of the context around these chords will be missing as I'm just going to look at one vertical moment from each arranger, but just think of it as an interesting exercise. For each chord I'll look at the orchestration, the amount of distinct pitches and doublings, and then give a general overview of the voicing. I'm generally going to do this in chronological order, and interestingly Gil Evans' arrangement of The Duke is the oldest I have in my examples. In general this chord is nice and high and bright. It lacks a real bottom end as the tuba isn't playing in this instance. It's an E flat triad over a D flat 7 sharp 9. The orchestration is flute, two bass clarinets, two horns, five trumpets, three trombones, and rhythm. There are seven distinct pitches in this chord. Here are the chord tones that are present and their doublings. In this chart, I have the scale degree column and the doublings column is how often that note is in the chord at any octave. And the third column is any special notes about that particular pitch. As I've mentioned in my previous videos about Gil Evans' voicings, there is no root in the upper parts. It's a very tasty bright chord with plenty of tang or spice with the sharp ninth and the ninth present. The trombones are in a nice solid and loud range. There is only one instrument on the third and it's a trombone in a nice loud range again. As Gil often did, one of the bass clarinet doubles the lowest brass instrument, usually the tuba, but in this case it's the bass trombone. The French horns double their E flat at the same pitch, which is common in loud tutis. Gill is known for his use of woodwinds other than the saxes, but it's interesting to note that the brass outweighs the winds 10 to 3 in this chord. As David Berger has told me, with Duke there are no rules, and you can see that a bit in this chord. The orchestration is clarinet, 4 saxes, 5 trumpets, 4 trombones and rhythm. There are 6 distinct pitches in this chord. The doublings are as follows. There aren't many thirds, and that's mostly because of the context with the sharp 11 in the top voice. The next chord has the sharp 11 resolving to the third. That's probably why Duke has only left a major second between the top voices. There are a lot of root notes present throughout the range. There is more balance between the reeds and the brass, unlike the Gil Evans example. The saxes are in a nice register, nestled between the trumpets and trombones. This arrangement was for the bassy band and contains the typical voicings that are found in that style, where the saxes and trombones play an octave down from the trumpets, with the baritone sax on the melody two octaves below, or on the root notes. This chord is a little different as he has opened up the voicing of the saxes and brass, and that's probably because it's part of a loud introduction. But you can see that the top three saxes are an octave lower than the trumpets. The orchestration is for a typical big band with five saxes, four trumpets, four trombones, and rhythm. There are seven distinct pitches in this chord. And here are the doublings. There's a nice even weighting on each pitch due to the octave doublings. The root note is doubled by an octave at the bottom with a baritone sax an octave below the bass trombone. Otherwise the root does not appear in the upper voices. On the sharp ninth pitch, only one instrument is playing it, but it's a trombone in a nice loud range. This is a nice loud and crunchy chord, with the saxes in a grunty range. Trumpets 1 and 4 are an octave apart, which is typical for Thad Jones. The orchestration is a typical big band. 
and the chord has seven distinct pitches. Here are the doublings. This is a wonderful tangy chord in a swinging arrangement. It's interesting that the root isn't the lowest pitch in the horns, although the bass is playing a D flat. This is partly because of the context, as moments later the baritone and bass trombone double the root note to ground the phrase somewhat. I can see why the melody needs to be doubled by the trumpet an octave below, as the middle of the chord is so thick and tangy. There are a couple of interesting points with this tutti chord. The lowest pitch, the third, is doubled by baritone sax and trombone. There is only one instrument on the root and sharp nine, but both are trombones. This is a bit similar to what we've seen in previous chords, where the trombone in the right range is powerful enough to be heard. The two thirteenths in the chord are played by the saxes, with one of them quite low. This is a classic Nestico arrangement for Count Basie on the awesome album of the same name. The trombones are an octave down from the trumpets, which is part of the typical Basie style. The baritone sax is on the root note down low, and the saxes have a nice open voicing. The orchestration is for typical big band, and there are only four distinct pitches in this chord. Here are the doublings. This chord has only four distinct pitches, which is quite a few less than the previous examples, but of course this doesn't affect the beautiful swinging chart. Each pitch has the same amount of doublings, with only the melody having an extra instrument. This stunning arrangement has lots of interesting chords. This one is taken from a climactic moment that leads into the alto sax solo. The orchestration is for typical big band. There are six distinct pitches in the chord. And here are the doublings. It's interesting how the seventh is in a more typical lower part of the voicing. Bob Brookmeyer has really accentuated the semitone from the ninth to the minor third, as it's doubled in the saxes and trombones an octave apart. <laughs> Trumpets 1 and 4 are on the eleventh in octaves, with a root note and a seventh in between. It's interesting that Bob opts to double the root with the second trumpet, and not include a ninth. This chord during the sax solo is nice and bright. The pitches are spread right throughout the range of the chord, which extends right from a low B flat up to a B flat four octaves higher. The orchestration is two soprano saxes, one tenor sax and baritone sax, four trumpets, four trombones and rhythm. There are six distinct pitches. And here are the doublings. It has a few interesting features, such as a nice low note played by the bass trombone, and only one instrument on the third. But this is probably to accentuate the eleventh, which is doubled by the second trumpet and second trombone. The third and the eleventh are placed right next to each other in a prominent range. So what have we learned? I think I've learned that there are lots of ways to voice a big bang chord. Generally any pitches that weren't doubled were placed carefully so that they would contribute to the texture, usually with a trombone or trumpet in a solid range. The average amount of instruments that were on the melody pitch was 3, and the average amount of instruments on the root pitch was 2.7. Let me know if you enjoyed the video, and write any questions you have in the comments section below. I'm sure I miss some of your favourite chords. If you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe.